All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning again, as I already said. It is a, it is a blessing. It's, um, you know, the old adage about you never miss your water till your well runs dry. Well, we're having a good example of it this morning, with Brother Larry being out, and uh, just to continue to pray for him and uh, ask the Lord to touch his body and heal him for the next time we come together that he'll be welcome to be with us and minister to us. Uh, we are looking forward to hearing Brother Jerry this morning as he brings a message and we do ask that you pray for him. Uh, pray for this uh, lesson this morning that uh, uh, I might be in the will of the Lord and I might read the words correctly that are in God's word. You know, uh, sometimes I may say things that uh, don't sound right but uh the most of the time when i when i do something like this i know i feel like that the holy spirit is is here and he kind of he'll straighten things out i pray that he he's with us this morning and he promised he would be so we're we're good to go this morning if you would turn your bibles to the book of mark we want to <clears throat> look at that mark 14. And it's the 12th chapter, for a 12th verse where we want to start concerning some of the uh, things that are uh, even in, in promising and uh, preparing. This is what I was hoping to uh, stress just a little bit this morning. So you bear with me and uh, pay attention to the word. And I thank the Lord will bless you this morning. And, in verse 12 of chapter 14 of the book of Mark, it says, <clears throat> and, the first, and the first day of the unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where will, where will wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou makest eat the Passover? And we see here, this is, uh, uh, one of the disciples asking Jesus this and he didn't know where to go to prepare a place but anyway we see in in verse 13 and he sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water follow him and wheresoever he shall go in Say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for. So this morning I wanted to read this for you. Uh, you notice where he says here that uh, in verse 15, he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. Now, uh, I want to read something in a few minutes over in John's Gospel, and it's, it goes like, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. Now, this morning, we that are the children of God have already had a, have a place prepared for us, and our names are recorded it's been done before the world began before the world was ever created God in his all-knowing knew what he was going to do knew who he was going to call and knew how everything would end he knew it all now you say well why would he do that like that well You'll have to ask him when you get up there. Because, listen, this little brain of mine is not strong enough to even come to the to try to start to answer this. But I know that the Bible says that God foreknew all things. And so by this, I know that he knew where the, they were going to observe the Lord's Passover. And he told them here how to identify the one that would show them the place and uh you know it's uh 
and, and I don't know what their custom was back then, but he says here that the man will be bearing a pitcher of water. And I don't know, uh, but that would be, I could find him. Because, you know, you just don't see a, ever, ever, everywhere you go see a, a man walking around bearing, carrying a, a pitcher of water. And so the Lord has made it very clear where that he has prepared this place for them. And he has also made it very clear to us where that we are going when we leave this world. And, and, and so here's, here's what I want you to see. And his disciples went forth and came unto the city and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. Now he says it's prepared for them, but it wasn't ready. So these disciples got everything in order, and I don't know what all they had to do, but they had certain things that they had to do to prepare for this meal, this Passover, that they were going to uh, observe. And it, the Passover consisted of a lamb and wine and bread, I know. And it may have, and, and it, it talks of bitter herbs also. So that this was some of the things that they had to prepare for uh, the Passover. So he said here, and as they, uh, and, and, and in verse uh, uh, 17, and in the evening he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him, one by one, is it I? And another saith, is it I? And you, you know, by them asking these questions, Judas Iscariot knew what he had done. Judas Iscariot knew because he had already uh, uh, took it in his heart that he was going to was he was going to uh, do something for uh, against the Lord. And so, and he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for him that, good were it for that man if he had never been born. And so, this is, this is some of the things this morning that we need to take in consideration. If we're not saved, if we're not saved and ready to meet the Lord, if the Lord has not called us, listen, this, this, it says here for that man, it's good for him that he'd never been born. And it's a, it, it goes for anyone that's lost. Well, you need to think about this and you need to consider your condition because uh, there's no hope for you. There's no hope until the Lord Jesus Christ calls you or and, save, and saves you. And so here, is, this is what I wanted to write. Now, I want, I, want, I want to read this like I started telling you about here in John 14, if you would. And you know it by heart, I'm sure. But I want you to see this. John 14, 1. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, as the disciples, he told them where the place was at and the room was ready, but they, the disciples had to go and prepare the place for them. Now here, Jesus is saying, the mansion is already built for you. But he says, I'm going and I'm going to prepare it for you. I'm going to do the things in there that needs to be done and get it ready for you when you come. Now what all that consists of, uh, I, I, I have no idea. But I know this. I know that if Jesus has been, been there and preparing a place for us some 2,000, some 3,000 years, listen, it's going to be some more of a place to stay and be, and we don't want to miss it. And the thing of it is, he'll be there, and he'll be with God, and the Holy Spirit will be there, and the, th the Godhead will be there with us, and we'll be rejoicing throughout the ages of eternity. 
And, and, and so here, it, it, it should encourage us, it should uh, make us to think. And he said, if I, and if I go and prepare a place for you. Now here he says, he said first, he says here, let not your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. So he's, 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 he's telling you the truth. But he says, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So this morning, we, as God's people, need to be looking for him to come because he said here in the in his word i'm i'm going to come back and get you now you say well it may not it may be for a long time i don't know you don't know nobody don't know because jesus christ himself does not know what day that the lord will send him back but he knows this he's ready to come back when he sends him so here is the thing of it he has promised us that he would prepare a mansion for us. He's, he's already built it. He's going to prepare it. And he says he's going to come back and get us. Now, this may be, this may be old news to a lot of you. And you uh, I, I, I'm sure it is. But I, I know this this morning. That we as God's people need to be reminded of this thing. Because, listen. Satan is out there raging. And he is... He's on the war path, and listen, he's, he wants to hinder you in any way. And this morning, I want to show you something here in, in, uh, in Peter, what Peter said this morning. And you can, you can take this uh, uh, and, and, and listen to it. But here in uh, verse, uh, let me find it for you just a minute. I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll, I, need to, I need to read this. Uh, Peter said unto uh, uh, to Jesus, he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And we know that Peter did this thing. And listen, that's the same with us this morning. We have a desire this morning not to forsake the Son of God. We have the, the desire in our hearts this morning to serve Him and be just as close as we can to Him. But listen, that adversary, your enemy, the devil, he's out there and he's trying to sway you. He's trying to infiltrate your body. He's trying to put thoughts into your mind that's not pleasing to the Lord. And people, this morning, this, this old flesh that we have, it's so easy for the devil to get into and disturb. And listen, he'll lead you around just like a dog chasing his tail right in a circle. He'll just keep leading you around and he will hinder you and keep you from serving the Lord. And so this morning, I'm telling you, you need to, you need to be aware of what's going on in your life. Because, listen, I know it ain't all peaches and cream. I know this morning from this past week with me and with what the devil and how he is he has hindered me and he's tried his best to uh, uh, entice me to do things and to do things that I didn't want to do. Listen, he's there and, and we might as well we might as well to uh, get ready for it because the battle's on. Now, notice here, I want, I want to read this to, if I can find uh, in verse uh, uh, verse nine. Uh, uh, he's, he's talking to Philip and he says, well they ask him where he was going in and, and, and verse 4 and whether I go you know and the way you know and, and, and Thomas said unto him, Lord we know not whether thou goest and how can we know the way and Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life no man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me and so here is the here is the way you come. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices, or it satisfies us. Jesus said unto him, Have you I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how saith thou then, show us the Father? And so he is, he is talking to Philip, and he's saying, Philip, I've been with you three and a half years, and haven't you seen me? 
And you see, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. And this morning, if Jesus Christ is in, coming to your life and you and 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 and, and, and spoke to you and, and called you, listen, you know who he is, and you know when he talks to you, and he knows you know when he says something to you that you ought to listen to, and you know the Father because Jesus said here, if you know me, you know the Father also. And so this morning, you are in connected connection with the Father through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is sitting on the, the uh, beside of the Father, making intercession for you. And he's apologizing to God. He's saying, Lord, I've died for them on the cross of Calvary. And my blood has paid the atonement. And I'm asking you to forgive them. And he cannot forgive Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was a perfect being while he was here upon this earth. And he's still a perfect being. So here he asked Philip, he said, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how saith thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very sake. Now listen, I want you to go back with me just a little bit this morning, back in our lesson in chapter 14, uh, of Mark 14, and listen to this. When we, uh, as, as they were eating the supper, and as Jesus told them, one would, 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 would betray him. In verse 22, and as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had thank, given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Now notice here, he said shed for many. He didn't say all, because then Judas Iscariot would have been saved. But listen, he said it's the, the, the shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Now, Jesus has he done, already spoke these words to them. And notice in verse 27, And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And what he's saying here, it is written that Jesus Christ will be killed this night, and all the all of his the disciples will, will, will split up and, and go their ways. <clears throat> and notice... Uh, here, uh, but after I am, but after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I, not I. And this is this is our desire today. This is it should be our desire today is to stand for Jesus regardless of what comes. And Peter, at that time, I believe with all my heart, Peter meant it, he meant it, and he, he said what he meant. But listen, Satan got into Peter. Satan caused Peter to fear. And notice what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me. And people... We deny the, 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 the Savior, our Savior. We deny Him, and, 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 and we do it. And we have a desire not to, but there's, and, I, and that's the reason I'm saying to you this morning about Satan. Satan is so, he is so strong, and he is, he is doing everything that God will let him do. And he's coming to you, and he's, he's interfering with your life. He's causing you to do things and to and to get into trouble that you don't want to do. And so this morning, you need to take a second look at your life and how things is going and uh, get a little bit closer to the Lord because uh, it's not going to be long before this life is going to be over. And so I don't want to stand before God and, 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 and hear these things. And uh, But he, 
And this, now notice in verse 31 what I said about Peter. But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And so all the disciples there that night agreed with Peter. And I don't know if Judas was there or not, but I, I'm, but all the disciples that was there agreed with Peter and said, no, we'll never deny you. But listen, they did. And they all left him because he said they would. And so he said here, and they, uh, they, and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said unto his disciples, now he said, he said here, he's telling them, he's not told me, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be betrayed tonight. And he said, and he, and he, and they came to the place and it was Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit ye here while I pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy and said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorry unto death. Tarry you here and watch. Now, you would think, you would think that a, a, that a, that a good solid Christian, a disciple that had seen the miracles that Jesus had done, he, he walked on water before him, he had, uh, he had fed the thousands, and he said, he, and, and he, when he, he told him to watch, and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And Jesus dreaded the, the sting of death. Jesus dreaded the dying on the cross. Jesus dreaded these things. And he, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. And this morning, that should be our our prayer to the Lord is if he will remove it. But listen, if he can't, if he won't, and, and you know Paul, uh, Paul had the, the problem, and he said uh, he prayed to Jesus three times, or prayed to God three times that he would remove it. He said, no, I won't remove it. But he said, I'll, I'll make you strong enough that you can bear it. And here, Jesus is praying to God, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping. And said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Could not thou watch one hour? You know, you know that, that, was, that had to be a low blow. That, 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 that made it worse for Jesus because of uh, him telling them these things and then and then coming there and finding them asleep he said in verse 38 watch ye and pray lest ye enter into temptation so this is the this is the one of the points that Jesus is trying to prove when we go to sleep on Jesus and when we fail to serve him like we should and when we make promises that we can't keep Listen, he says, watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And so that's what we're dealing with this morning, people, is a bunch of flesh that's so weak that we cannot, we cannot, we cannot provide for ourselves. The Lord has to do it for us. And we try to serve him. And I don't, I don't know about you, but I know this. I make a miserable attempt at it sometimes, and I, I get, I get so undone sometimes at myself because that I just don't, I don't do what I should do. Uh, I don't pray like I should. I don't read my Bible like I should. I don't, I don't. There's so many things that I could do better, but I ain't got no excuse. I ain't got no excuse. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now. Now that's, that I think sometimes is the way Jesus feels about me. He comes to me and he finds me asleep and he wakes me up. 
They said, couldn't you stay away? I come back again, I'm asleep. And the next time he come back, he said, well, sleep on me. Sleep on me. And, and sometimes I, sometimes I get, I get to the point where I don't know what to do because uh, 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 of the way that I, the way that I serve the Lord. But here, again, he says to them, sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. So Judas went with them. Judas was going to, to get a, a, a gang to come back and take, the, take Jesus to the governor. And immediately while he yet spake, come Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. So I want to, that's, that's that. I want to read something else to you this morning, this morning to, uh, in Mark's gospel in uh, uh, 6, 14 and 6, I believe it is 1462. <clears throat> I got something I want to read here. In, in Mark 14, Six, verse 62 and Jesus said unto them I am I am all let me find it again I, I am there it is I am ye shall see the, I am and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming into the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes. And of course, here, I should have read this, but here uh, the high priest is asking him who he is. But in verse 61, I'm sorry, but he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Who art thou? Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see me, the Son of Man, sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witness? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what thanks ye? And they all commanded him to be guilty of death. And, and some began to spit on him and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh unto him one of the maids on the high priest of the high priest. And when he, when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out to the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after they, after they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them. For thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth thereto. And he began to curse and to swear, <coughs> saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crow, and Peter called to mind the words that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. And so that was, that was the thing that Peter did. And you know Peter, Peter did this, and uh, the the Lord had it wrote down in in the Bible for not for not only for Peter's uh, uh, what he had done, but to remind us Peter how how many things Peter had done, how much what he had saw, and all this. But yet he he even got to the point where he did curse and said, I don't know, I don't know Jesus. And so uh, we this morning uh, can think upon these things and, and uh, maybe draw us a little bit closer. And, and when the devil comes, 
when he's trying to uh, aggravate you and and get you to to do things that he that he wants you to do. Maybe this will this will bring to mind the Holy Spirit bring to mind what we've read here concerning Peter. And uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's it's a, it's a it's a close walk. We need to we need to be in tune with the Lord every day and uh, be be humble as we can because uh, uh, that's one of the things that Jesus uh, said that He would bless it to uh, humble us. So we thank you this morning for listening to us read God's word. Pray this number.